I just got a call from an animal control officer who said that a man walked into Petco with a tissue box with a baby kitten in it and said, can you take this kitten? And then ran out before they could even answer. <laughs> so Petco called the animal control officer and the animal control officer called me. We've been dying for babies. We needed a baby, a feline baby. Feline baby. Not a human baby. <laughs> I'm not interested in human babies. My favorite babies to care for are the really, really tiny ones because they're the hardest to care for because they're the most vulnerable. When you raise them from that young, you feel so bonded with them. Ooh, this is like straight up the nose. This is not a flattering angle. I should have looked. It's always so exciting. Here we are, Petco. Ready to get our new baby. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hi. Oh, oh, hi. They did feed it once, I believe. Yeah, we okay. Fed one. Okay. Cool. What did you feed the baby? Just the uh, milk substitute. Okay, the KMR. That's a newborn baby. Really dirty, mm -hmm. covered in fleas. Well, you got good lungs on yeah, you. That makes alive. me happy. <laughs> yeah, no, he's real talkative. Mm -hmm. How long have you guys had him? Uh, I would say maybe an hour. Oh, good. Hour really, really hour. recent. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I brought a little heat pad for him to help him get warmed up, and we'll take him back, and he'll be in good hands. Oh, Look you. at this little angel. So cute. I love him. I can't wait to get all the flea dirt off of you. Do you see all that dirt in there? See that? That is not good. All right, so we need to give him a name. Yep. And he came in a tissue box. So there's gotta be something we can come up with around there. There's nothing glamorous that happens with the tissue. It's all <laughs> like sick fluids that you discard immediately, so. That's like what I use to wipe butts. Yeah. Okay, maybe we don't name him after tissues. That's not very but dignified. Wipe. I mean, that will probably be his nickname in about three minutes. It's okay. Weigh him. 81 grams. So he's definitely just a couple of days old. Before we feed him, I want to make sure he's nice and warm. When a little guy like this is found outside in the cold, it's really not safe to feed them immediately. You want to help them get back to a good temperature before you feed them. What I'm doing right now is I just have him on a heat disc covered by a blanket so that we can get him to the right temperature so his organs are ready to process the food that we're gonna give him. You can see with that warmth, he really calmed down. You gotta get warm. I'm just gonna keep him on that for a couple minutes. Make sure that he's warm enough to feed. It's okay. I'm estimating that this little guy is probably about five days old. He doesn't have his umbilical cord anymore. So zero to five days, they'll have an umbilical cord. His is gone, but he's still really little. His ears are folded, his eyes are closed, and he only weighs 80 grams. So I think he's under a week for sure. He's so little that I'm gonna start him with a syringe. This is a three milliliter oral syringe. And I'm gonna use a Miracle Nipple Mini with it. And then I made him some fun. So at this age, he's not gonna eat more than one syringe. So we'll see how he does. Sometimes the first feeding can be a little tricky. He's hungry. Wow, okay. He's hungry. Yeah, that's really good though. That is a really good first feeding, wow. He's swallowing all of it, I can feel it. The funny thing is when their eyes are still closed, you can't tell when they're awake and when they're asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes they fall asleep while they're eating. That was delicious. 
He ate two milliliters, which is a nice big meal for a baby this small. He's purring. <gasps> I can't believe you're purring and you're only a couple days old. Can you hear his purr? Yeah. That was so spectacular, little dude. That was great. You're so good at eating. Oh, there's a fleet. Oh my God, do you see him? I got him. Squish him. Oh, well, we're evicting all your fleas. There's one too. Okay, now let's see if you gotta go to the bathroom. His little backside is so dirty. Whoa, we got a lot of pee. Okay, so see how dark his urine yeah. is? Very concentrated. That's because he's dehydrated. And he's dehydrated because he wasn't eating. Well, we'll take care of that. Your pee's gonna be nice and clear next time. That probably feels really good to get to finally pee. He has to poop. You have to poop. We're gonna be doing a lot of pooping into a tissue over the next couple weeks. And we gotta wash those fleas off him. I feel so horrible giving baths to these little tiny guys, but we'll just make it really fast. So this is a flea comb. The flea comb will pick up all the flea dirt. So you see all those little black specks? This is like leftover um, blood and crust from the fleas being on him. Yeah. So they're all over him. He's crawling with fleas. Fleas are gross little parasites that will nest in the animal's fur and they will actually suck his blood. And that is bad enough for an adult cat, but it's really bad for a kitten because a kitten his size can't afford to lose any blood. Um, basically the only safe way to get these fleas off of him is by giving him a bath. Um, we're gonna use a gentle baby soap for him. So this is um, like a fragrance free, tear free, baby bee wash by Burt's Bees. That's what I'm gonna use on him. Um, we're gonna try to do this as quickly as possible because I really don't want him to get a chill. So the water is comfortably warm. The first step is to create a ring of soap around his neck. And you have to be very careful not to get his face. We don't wanna get his mouth. We don't wanna get his eyes. We just wanna create a ring around the neck. This protects um, his head from any of the fleas traveling up. Okay, once I've got that, I'm gonna just cover his body and we're gonna quickly suds him up. Now, as sad as it is to hear him cry, it's actually a great sign because it means he's responsive. Um, a worse sign would be if he was not responsive, if he was um, lethargic or not meowing, not reacting. Um, this is not pleasant for him, but it's much more pleasant than losing his blood and becoming anemic. So you never want to put a kitten through this unless there's a good reason to. We gotta dry him off immediately. You never ever leave a kitten wet. They cannot regulate their own body temperature and being cold is not safe for him. So we've got his little heating pad right here, which we're gonna use with him. That blanket is contaminated now because it's covered in all of his nasty flea eggs. So we'll wash that. And then we gotta wash his head. All right, so I'm gonna Pareto this little guy. I wish I had like 10 arms sometimes. I'm gonna give him a little sponge bath on his dome. See all that black flea dirt? Can you see it? That's pretty gross. So that's all blood, dirt. We wanna to try to get as much of it off as we can, avoiding his ears and avoiding his eyes. You can even see the red from the blood. That can't feel good for a little guy. These fleas will hide between their toe pads, they'll hide on their eyes, in their ears, they'll hide all over these little kittens. So you gotta be very thorough. I'll see him. Mm -hmm. They're trying to take up occupancy right here. And I'm saying no. And I'm rinsing him down the drain. Get out of here. Just trying to get these living ones off of him. It's like fighting a war against little aliens. See the blood? That's from the fleas. 
This is why fleas are not our friend. What are you doing? I have to keep car away. I gave him a little center part. Okay, so now he's eaten. He's been weighed. He doesn't have any more fleas. He went to the bathroom. Now we're gonna just keep him warm and let him sleep for a few hours. And then we'll wake up and we'll eat again.